a lot of senior advisors that I work with are in recruiting deals. If you've been around long enough and you're still at the same firm you started with, you're probably more unusual than you think. A lot of FAs, for one reason or another, decide at some point to take a recruiting package. I'm not here to judge whether that's good, bad, or indifferent. I moved twice during the course of my firm. It was kind of one time too many. But I learned a couple things by mistake, fortunately, that I was able to kind of pass on to current producers that I work with in a coaching or consulting fashion. What really surprised me, and I'm glad I found out with enough time to do something about it, was the fact that there's imputed interest in every single recruiting package that you see. It's a forgivable loan. Forgivable loans must have, by IRS regulations, they got to have some form of interest rate imputed. That rate is set by the feds depending upon what time zone is involved. Now, currently, we're talking about probably 10-year deals. So deals in that zone are, I think, right now around four and a quarter percent. So I put together a little illustration. Maybe you're doing this already. Maybe you're not. If you're not, you're going to want to watch the rest of this video. The net interest expense you are able to deduct as investment income expense. That investment income expense can be deducted against investment income. What kind of investment income? Glad you asked that. Short-term capital gains, long-term capital gains, and taxable interest, which can also include dividends. So what does this mean to you? Well, if you haven't done it yet, you can go back up to three years and refile your returns. Even if you don't have capital gains in those years or investment income you wish to protect, do it anyway so you can bring forward all of that investment interest expense because you can carry it indefinitely. At some point, you may need it. Maybe you don't, but it doesn't hurt to have it there. Assume at some point during that period, you had short-term capital gains. And in this case, I'm going to use the first three years of investment interest expense against a $2 million recruiting package. Following an amortization schedule in the first three years, you will have accrued net interest expense of roughly $250,000. Let's just assume you had short-term capital gains of the same amount. Well, over that period, your net after tax, assuming a 45% top marginal bracket, would be roughly $138,000. Ooh, but wait. Wait, wait, wait. You've got the investment interest deduction handy. So you take $250,000, which is the first three years on a $2 million note at four and a quarter percent, and look what you get back. $112,000, almost one thirteen. dollars Long-term capital gains, not bad either. Uncle Sam's going to send you a check for $50,000. Taxable interest income or dividends that didn't qualify perhaps for the dividend exclusion, another hundred and twelve k coming back. Over 10 years, same note. What do you get back? Well, total investment interest expense over that period of time, 516,000 bucks. Protecting short-term gains, 232,000 more in your pocket. Long-term gains, 103, and ordinary income, same as short-term gains. Guys, I don't know if you knew about this or you didn't know about it, but if you didn't, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever you want to think about, but I would, before you file your next tax return, get your deal numbers to your accountant and say, does this help me? If he says, well, a little bit, tell him to redo it anyway, because you're going to put whatever that total amount of interest is in your note, you're going to put that into your tax returns going forward, and you're going to use it at your leisure. It can save you a whole bunch of money. Thanks for your time. Hope it helped.